Hi, I'm Pukachu, and this is another Dreams Early Access tutorial. Today we're going to look at animating sculptures. And there are a few different ways of doing animations in Dreams. Uh, you can use sculptures, you can use paintings, you can use a combination. I'm going to focus on sculptures here, and very specifically on a couple of different techniques using keyframes on a timeline. This will be in three parts, so if you want to learn all the processes, watch all three videos. The first one will focus on scale and effects. The second one will focus on relative movement, which involves connectors. And the third one will focus on combining animated features to make something more complex, like these growing beanstalks that have a lot of different stages of animation in them. So moving on, the first thing we're going to look at is this tree. And one of the things that I want to emphasize about the way that I'm doing these animations is that I'm kind of starting at the end uh, because I'm not working entirely from scratch. I'm using assets that I already made previously or that came from the community and I'm looking at their finished form and then making something that grows. So this animated tree is a remix of Cherry Blossom Tree by my friend Vex Doppel. And if we go in and look at it here, it's a very nice little tree. Actually, it's quite a large tree. It doesn't uh, actually have any of that growth animation. That is what I did, and that's just using scale and a little bit of uh, the effects that you can do within a sculpture. So doing this, the first thing is that I start a remix. And uh, this tree is all grouped together. It's multiple objects that are grouped. So I'm going to actually just ungroup it, for starters, just so I don't have to scope in and out of that group. Starting with the animation timeline, I like to just stick it on the object. It doesn't have to be there, but I just sort of like to have it there because I think it's more tidy that way. Open up the timeline, take a keyframe, drop it in. And if you're not really familiar with keyframes, they do all sorts of things in the game. You drop it in and it automatically starts recording. You can make a lot of different editorial changes and what we're going to look at right now is scale and all of these little puff balls on the tree are individual sculptures. And so I'm just going to go over to one over here and nothing's actually being recorded yet because I haven't made a change. A keyframe doesn't record all the changes the way a action recorder does. It just records the final state. So now I'm going to grab this one and I'm just going to scale it down and kind of leave it on top of that branch there. And now if I rotate around, I see I need to move it there. So it's just sort of stuck on that branch. Do the same thing with this one. Oops. Except I actually want to stop recording there. And uh, this is all going to be on one keyframe, but I'm just going to back out really quick here because I want to show how you can do do this in multiple stages. So I've just shrunken down that one piece there, and now I've, I'm back out here in uh, assembly mode. I'm going to now uh, hold L1 and click X. Oops, getting a little closer. L1 and X to edit the keyframe, and now I'm recording again. I've already made the changes to this one, and you can see it has those little lines on it showing I made changes. Now I'm back in the same keyframe, so just to show that you don't have to do it all in one go. You can stop, you can save your project, whatever you want. I'm going to do the same thing again here, just sort of shrink this thing down. And in making this animated version of the tree, I simply repeated that process with all of these little puff balls. It sounds time consuming, but really it isn't. You, you know, get in the flow and go pretty quickly. I'm going to skip ahead now by going back to the finished product. And now, now that I've gone over the first step here, I'm just going to play back this animation and I'll show the timeline as it's playing back. And you can see the first thing that happens very slowly, all of these little bundles of flowers start to grow into the tree. And what we're seeing happening there is this long, slow transition in the very top of the timeline here. Now, this keyframe here, I'm going to pause it. This keyframe here doesn't actually do anything 
this is a keyframe that I placed just to get out of the transition of my one keyframe here, which is all of those little bundles of flowers, very, very small. So if you've gone in the sort of starting at the end method, which is what I did here, you've got your one keyframe that has all of those bundles shrunken down small. And then what you need, I'm going to delete this here back the playhead up to where I want it to happen. Then you can just take a keyframe, drop it on your timeline there, and stop recording. And you haven't actually made any changes, but you're just recording the default state of the tree. That doesn't mean you're recording other keyframes that are currently highlighted. And that's an important thing to know. You're not actually recording off of these other keyframes that are active. You're just recording the default state of the level and uh, or the creation. And then you can uh, take the keyframe and stretch it out to whatever length you want it to be. So that's the process of dropping a keyframe that just records the default state of your creation. And so now if I go back to the beginning and play, you have this transition in here. This is something that you can adjust if you hover over and you hold uh, L1 and press square, you get these different blend types. You can do a linear, ease in, ease out, or ease both. Oftentimes linear is all that you need and that is the default, but the ease both gives you a more natural transition oftentimes. So let's stop now and look at the next stage of this which is where these flower petals sort of start to dissolve. And, uh, and there's two components here. You can drag the playhead back and forth to see the different stages of the animation. The component of the falling petals is actually a painting. So if I go here and I scope in, you can see that it's just a couple of little uh, paint strokes. It's actually one paint stroke that I grabbed and duplicated and made, or I, I cloned and made it a little bit smaller. And then I use the duplicates tweak on there. And so you can see I have them on a plane and uh, those are my settings to just have those sort of spread out. And then they're also uh, slightly animated at an 80% playback speed. And these are things that you just sort of play around with to find whatever looks good for that purpose. The other aspect of this, which is the flowers sort of dissolving a little bit. I have that group, so I have to scope in there. If I open up the tweak menu, I'll be able to see what this keyframe is doing. It's actually doing a few things in the tweak menu. This is a very simple way of creating an animated effect. So one thing it's doing is tinting slightly white so the flowers turn from a brighter pink to a paler pink and decreasing the original color saturation uh, at the same time. The next thing that's changing is here in the fleck properties you can see the ruffle and impasto have been turned are being turned all the way up to the top and that's happening uh, during this transition. And then finally, in the uh, effects properties, there was already a wave effect on there to give them the effect of blowing in the breeze. But in this transition, I also have the evaporate effect coming on. So since I've deleted some things and changed some settings from the original, I'm just going to uh, back up a whole bunch here until I get back to the beginning. And now, Let's see, I think everything is uh, reset here, back to where we started. And so the final component is the green leaves growing in. And uh, oh, and I should mention also this bottom keyframe. This is uh, this relates to the falling flower petals. They are made invisible uh, to start with. Oops. And uh, it's not the same as a sculpture where you have an invisibility or a 
visible setting, it's actually just the opacity. So on the f first keyframe here, their opacity has been turned all the way down to zero, and then they come up to full opacity, so they're fully visible, and then they turn back down to zero again on the last one. Oops. So the last component here uh, is the green leaves growing in. This long middle keyframe is actually just keeping those leaves, those green leaves, at a smaller size so that they just aren't really seen. And then here they gradually grow in and get to up to a uh, larger, slightly larger scale than the original flower petals were. They have some different effects on them than the flower petals did, which is that they are uh, shinier, they're different fleck type, and they also have a little bit more animation. They have the throb animation, so they appear to blow in the breeze a little bit more. So that is the basics of how this type of animation is done, and I'm gonna go over one small troubleshooting thing, which, again, this is early access, so the game isn't entirely finished, and this is a little bit of a um, sort of a bug in the game that has been reported and is being worked on, but there's an option with keyframes, which is to keep changes. And sometimes you want to do that if, for instance, uh, I had these leaves come in and then I had them get a little bit extra bigger and I wanted to keep that change. Um, it can be a problem when you have these long, slow transitions. If your keyframe is set to keep changes, it will make the transition happen faster than you want it to. So in this case right here, these two keyframes are copies of each other. They're the same keyframe. The only difference is that this one is attached to the transition, and I wanted to keep the changes, but because it was making the transition happen too quickly, I just have a duplicate of it that's ever so slightly offset. It doesn't even have to be offset, but I liked the look of it better. This one is set to keep the changes. The other one is not set to keep the changes, and that's just because of that little issue that will be fixed later on. But that's just a troubleshooting thing to be aware of for right now. So that is the basics of doing the uh, keyframing of uh, scale in a sculptural animation. And the next video will focus on adding relative movement which involves using connectors, because if you use keyframes to move things around, you can run into some problems. You won't always, but you can, and I'll go over that in the next video. So again, this is uh, Pukachu, and if you have any questions about this, stop by dreamsverse.com, or look me up on Twitter, LB Pukachu. If you leave comments in my YouTube, I will eventually see them, but I don't look at them as often as I look at the forums or Twitter. So that's all for this one, and we'll go on to relative movement.